All right, so we've just opened the carriage. I found two winged fae, uh, fae ancestry children in there. And now a bunch of guards, have come, three guards have come up. Sure. Seen us open up the carriage and are see the children and are readying their spears. Calm down there, gentlemen. We are rescuing these girls. And girl and boy. <laughs> and one's dead, I say, pointing back at the body that is basically only a few feet in front of them. You're gonna pull that, play that card. No, I'm sure if there's one thing police officers love, it's that. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't care about that. I'm gonna ignore that for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna calm the girls, the girls out, and the boy. Yeah. Here's the rescues. The uh, the guards seem to be calming down, and seeing that there isn't anything. At least for the moment, untoward going on. So they're willing to go along for it at the moment, at least. Alright. The little boy uh, l crawls over to the little girl and throws his arms around her. He is trembling. And she is. Sorry? Cold, scared? Uh. Both, possibly. And she's. Uh, patting his back and just saying "daijubu, daijubu," it's out, <laughs> yeah, and you can recognize her own their own language, but also little bits of interjection of common. Okay. Common is definitely not their first language. You can tell that. Okay. Again, you realize that their their clothing is made of a fine silk, and it is basically what in Earth would be considered a yukata. Okay. Yeah. It's been. Slightly higher trim to allow them to travel more, but it's been, despite being fine quality, it's been dirty and roughed up from how they've been, been uh, treated. And they also are spreading out their wings, which are not much, not that big, but enough that would lift something, some people of their small frame off the ground. And they rec you recognize them as kind of, we're not sure what bird they're from. We've, uh, Spent a lot of time in the woods and nature and seen a lot of birds. But we've never seen one with plumage like this. Okay. Also, at this point, you notice that she looks over and there is a... Uh, basically, a pair of packs that have been... Which you, that she goes over to. Which, they look like they would fit their size. They are packs which seem to have been created for the exact... And... and Designed not to interfere with, not to go on like the backpacks where the wings are. It's more like a travel, kind of like a belt style satchel that is meant to not interfere with uh, their wings, basically. You hear one of the guards says, What are they? He says he's like, <laughs> you can see a more wide-eyed and younger guard who probably isn't as <laughs> well versed to life outside Vern's Run and has <laughs> never seen people like this before. To be fair, neither have we. Hmm. No. They open, uh, she opens a pack, one of them, and looks in and sighs relief. As you, are you going to try and see what's in the pack at all? Just as she opens it? Nope. Okay. No. She reseals it and fastens it about her belt, and then and instructs the boy to turn around, and she fastens it around his. Based on their relationship and the age difference, you think she might be an older sister. There, okay. to him. Uh, All that stuff. At this point, you hear the boy's stomach grumble as if uh, <laughs> with hunger. <laughs> you think food would probably be good. They probably haven't been being treated the best. Okay. 
They seem to want to stay with us <laughs> at the moment. Like they wouldn't mind. They wouldn't say they're not going to say no to food. And you think they also want shelter? But because they've probably been, they're probably very sore because we've been, yeah, they've been tied up and we don't know for how long. But there are definitely some bruises on them, so they've not been treated the best. They look probably a little malnourished, and they probably want to sleep on something other than just the floor. Uh, All right. Moving cart. Mm -hmm. we'll take you back to our inn. We'll get you a meal. Mm -hmm. And get you set up. Um, and you can sleep in our room. Until you feel better, and we'll find a way of getting you home. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to do the old famous split the party thing. Oh, we're splitting the party, are we? Yep. I have something I need to do, and it has a time limit on it. Alright. So... I'm taking them back. You're taking them back, getting them some food, getting them in, um, getting okay. them set, situated in our room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let them use our beds and they can just sleep there. Yeah. Well, yeah, despite we're... being, uh, confined and cramped, they seem to have no issues stretching their wings and actually flying through the air, which has got a lot of people's attention. <laughs> They do actually, they're about child or halfling size between the two of them. And well, so they're quite light and they can fly about quite well, as it turns out. Right. Okay. Well, you can guide them back. Yep. I have something I need to do. Okay, uh, roll a perception uh, and check. Two. Uh, five. Five, okay. As I say, two. How do you roll? Okay. Yeah. Right. Five. Uh, oh, wait a minute. My owls are not bad. Oh, right. No, the owl's right. The owl's on top of the cart. Has it moved? Sixteen. <laughs> Much better. You hear two of the guards, not the wide eyed one who is just watching this with amazement. It's like, it says. And says, "Are we just going to let this lay as just be a, just be as it is at the moment? Just not do anything?" The more senior one says, "For the moment, yes. This is a very delicate situation. It's probably best to just let things play out for the moment." I turn to them. Okay. They rolled a four, by the way, to whisper. So. Uh, would you mind elaborating on that, please? This is... we've off at this point? Oh, we are in the process of heading off, yes. <laughs> as much as I can direct two people who can fly through the air <laughs> at will. I'm yes, you. they're following me. But they are also enjoying their newfound freedom. And <laughs> it is literally like flipping a switch. Like, they are suddenly gone from melancholy and sad to actually being quite cheerful. Right. Though, you can tell the fact their, their clothing probably isn't the most uh, practical for the amount of damp rain at the moment and the chill in the air. But... Anyway, so we're heading off. Uh, so the guard who says that says, uh, says, well, and says, just, I mean, we can't just leave two children in the care of strangers. It says, I think we're going to obviously have to look into this in the long run, but for the moment, I see no reason not to leave this be at the moment. That's an insight check on your part. Oh, that beats their 11. He's lying to you. Every word he just said was a lie. I'm going to walk straight up. Right in his face. Yep. I don't like being lied to. Are you going to do anything else, or is that it? I get the impression. Hmm. Some remuneration for you know, turning a blind eye. Am I correct? It's 
sort of check with that because this is definitely one. I'm, I'm going to say it's intimidation. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but that is, I think that's intimidation. You're trying to strong arm him into. Oh, uh, can't let that lie. I'll burn one more point of luck. Is that the last one? No, I got one left. Okay. Well, even with that change, it's still a 10. He says. And I would point out that of the two of us. I am an officer of the law, and you are a complete stranger. Without evidence, you'd have a hard time making that stick. Oh, I'm sure Arirudin might have something different to say about that. But with that role, he's not hes not phased. He's maintained his composure, and... Do I think I'm right, though? You rolled a natural... Tw you rolled a... Not a natural sure. 20. A, to a total of 20, yes. The response time, I mean, even for the watch, even considering how close we were, was fairly good. It was, like, it was close to like less than 30 seconds for them to get here. So they were watching this thing all along, is what probably it's Possibly, yes. There's some, it's like, there's enough shadiness going on here that you're suspicious, and that roll is enough to confirm some of your suspicions. But you have no evidence. I say, well, let's find them, shall we? Head over the horse. Like, I'm running out of time here. I didn't mean to have this extra thing. My stigma with animals is still going for a little bit longer. You have about six minutes left, yes. I say to the horse. Oh, and that horse is charmed for you for the next 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking to the charmed horse. Also, speaking of the charm itself, it has one charge left, so. Yeah, no, I didn't want to use up the last one. I asked the horse, mm -hmm. where you were heading? Uh, Have you done this route before kind of thing? Alright, I'm going to roll an intelligence check for the horse. <laughs> it's what you're asking for, unfortunately. Yeah, you know. Alright. Bring up that stat block for horses again. Their intelligence isn't very high. Oh, uh, no, it's two. No, it is two. That's a minus four. That's a six total? This big building. Nice hay. That's what you get. Alright. I am going to use my uh, ring of spellstorm. Ring of spellstorm. I'm going to cast Disguise Self from it. I'm going to do this right in front of that guard that I suspect. Okay, they're off to the side at this point. They're, prob they're probably going to be heading off in a short order, but yeah. They're still watching them, right? That one is, yes. So the dead one, okay. Yeah, the dead one. I'm going to disguise myself as him. Okay. <laughs> A few people react to this, but that's about it. Just, I want to make sure he sees that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he sees it. Uh, wagon. I'm going to close the door. Get out of the wagon. Yeah. And I'm going to ask the horses. I'm going to pick up the reins. Yeah. Not bother doing anything other than asking the horse to head off toward the good barn, please. Nice nice okay, they start heading off because your uh, your charmed one who you're speaking to just obeys you for this moment because this is a reasonable request, and the other one's gonna go along because well, because it has no choice. <laughs> yeah. This is instinct. All right, they all start turning towards down the south road. Alright, so they they made this turn. Yeah, they're making this turn now, and they're making it down that way. Yep. Thuggish. Alright, you're looking thuggish. Yep. And you are not. Also, I'm going to have my owl 
Mm-hmm. Rearview mirror. I want to see if that guard is following us. Perception check on your owl's part. Oh, wait, there's one more thing I forgot about the fact. Okay. With disadvantage, because they're wearing chain mail, eight. On he look he looks around the corner as watching you go and is looking a little nervous. But that's it. And he duck and he heads back around the corner. Okay. The cart doesn't go very far. Before some stable hands come up from a nearby stable that is along the south road there, okay. and is and they're basically taking uh, says ah says hello sir welcome back uh, just stationing the horses. Uh, how far? Just tell me to stop. One. Third house, third building. This one. Nope, other side. This one. That one. And right adjacent to that building is a very familiar looking tower. Yes. Very familiar. They adjoin the ground, in fact, as you now realize. And we've been in that building once before. Yes. And it says, uh, sir, uh, do you just want the the horses fed and watered and stabled? And the cart taken care of? Yes. Alright, the stable hands... No, not to ask any further questions, and they basically are going to take the horses and the cart, and they're going to station it there. Alright. What are you doing? I'm going to get down, obviously, at yep. this point. And I'm going to have my owl just fly around. You have about a minute left of Speak With Animals. No, you are not. It is it is a magical conversation between you and the animals. You speak normally, and the animal the spell translates for you basically. The horse goes big building, and then turns towards the other the stable. Nice hay. So the tower is the big building. Yes, from that. As the thug, yes. I'm going to walk up to the very familiar building. Mm hmm. Turn the door on. It's locked. I'm going to pound on the door. <laughs> Before you finish pounding, there is a slit in the door which is pulled drawn. It says, That's. What are you doing? That's not the secret knock. I've had a rough day. Do you mind? Let's open the bloody door. Or a persuasion check. <laughs> I knew I should have taken uh, enhanced ability today. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're interacting socially. These are all charisma based things, and you sent me away. Uh, 18. Minus. Yeah, oh, so 19 minus 1. Yeah. He says, oh, he says like, oh, good grief. Whiner. It's just raining out of here. Is the sky self? You can control the illusion to a certain degree, yes. Uh, right. I'll say, that's fine. Because otherwise, you would appear completely dry. Yeah. Wet, yes, but you're still soaking wet. So after you hear seven locks be unlocked, which you just see, <laughs> and the door opens, it says, fine, come in, come in, come in. We don't want to make a big scene about all this. No problem. So you go in. Yep. As I head in, what yep. do I see? I know the building. Yes, you know the building. Yes. So you so you've just come in. This is the uh, so this is the familiar building. There is one guard. There is one basically similarly dressed thug. There. And there is another one off the side. They are sat at a table, and 
They appear to be playing some sort of dice-based gambling game, which you think you remember the people who are here before possibly playing. Yeah. Uh, Therian was running this place. This place seems to be back in operation in here, as you can tell. It's like, the remember there was a watch-based investigation here, but I guess after Therian was killed, and it was turned in and everything was dropped, uh, seems like some people have taken up residence. It says, well, how did, the, how did your task go? Did you find anything? The, the other one says, wait a minute. Weren't there two of you? How do I have to define terrible for you? It was terrible. Oh, not there bad. Only one of us. Oh. Hmm. He says, the one who opened the door says, Yes, well, it's been like that here too. Business has been terrible, he says, and our new, empl and our new employers aren't exactly uh, winning us aren't winning a rave uh, review yet either, are they? He says, like said, terrible. He says, you hear a voice from below that says, what's going on up there? He says, he says, the cart's back. It says, we lost, uh, we lost one. You hear a grumbling from below. And you hear a footstep, you hear a pair of footsteps coming up from below. He says, Not yet. You guys are both standing there at the moment. The door's closed, but they haven't locked it yet. Though, you suspect that's only going to be happening in short order. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I do know the layout of this place. I do know the Yes, of we've been here before. Yeah. And two individuals come up. Two familiar-looking individuals. Familiar in the sense of... We've met them before. We've seen them before. One is a dwarf, and the other coming up is a half ogre, who is dressed in dark cloaks. Who you remember pulling a cart? These are the remaining grave robbers. Yes, I remember them. Yeah, he says, he says, uh, Harbeck. He says, turning to the dwarf, he says, "We seem to have uh, run into a bit of a problem." Uh, one of our boys is dead, and this one says, well, he didn't get any, uh, cargo over the time. He says, here are Harbeck, mutters some, uh, sounds like a curse in Dwarven. Uh, don't understand Dwarven. You do not understand Dwarven, but it sounds something, it sounds like a, it sounds like a short, angry expletive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and also curses tend to sound at least, or at least somewhat recognizable in different languages, usually. Yeah. Like this. This. Uh, things have been going awful. This. This is. This was our chance to. This is. This is our chance to actually make some money in this town and get back into the good life. And we are making no progress whatsoever. This. Harback was the guy. Harback is the dwarf. The dwarf, yes. Was he talking to the guy at the door at all? Uh, yes. He's the one doing most of the talking at the moment to him. So he hasn't addressed him by name, really? No, he hasn't. Uh, he says... He, uh, Harbeck turns to the half-ogre, whom we also realize has a weapon strapped to his back. A glaive. A familiar-looking glaive. <laughs> You did see that he was carrying a glaive la uh, last time we met him, but you didn't get a close look at it. But now that you see it, it's like, this looks familiar. It's got the same fanning blade at the top. Anyway, Harbeck turns to him and says, Orog, we might need to start making some more aggressive decisions going forward. He says, the plan was to lay low until our new benefactors get here. Says the bit it says business has been bad, but you know, that doesn't mean you get to, you make rash decisions. It says, which is probably some sage I I advice coming from a half ogre, who who they tend to not to. They tend to take after their ogreish parents and not parentage and not necessarily have not not be the brightest individuals. But this one's says something at least something a little has at least some judgment to him. 
Harbeck says, if we, yes, well, we're, he says, well, it wasn't exactly cheap to buy this place. He says, and we've managed to set ourselves up quite nicely here for the moment. He says, legally, I might add, which is annoying, but still, we had to take some risks. He says, he says, uh, he says, nothing. He says, absolutely nothing. Well, this is just great. He says, Yeah, he says, uh, he says, I described the guy. He says, uh, him. He says, yes, well, there's been a pair of them we've been dealing with. He says, we've been trying to get Lawrence out of jail, but it turns out he's not in the prison. No, he's in some other secret cell somewhere that we have, that they have no idea where he is. And so it's getting very expensive to get him, get information on that too, which is only means our coffers are suffering even more. He says, they had the nerve to try and ask you for more money at the moment, considering how bad things are. He says, he says, he says well, you tell them the next time he wants that, that Harbeck the Ox is going to remind him that we can very easily take eh, provide him with uh, some alternatives to gold for payment, such as relieving him of a couple of fingers. You have the same feeling that Harbeck has a... Uh, Short fuse. Yeah. Alright, so... So, near as you can tell at the moment, he says, Well, maybe the other group will have better luck. They're in town at the moment, but they're not going to do it back until later. Uh, he says, Well, I guess you might as well get some rest and some food. He says, At least that way your entire journey wasn't a total waste. He says, He says, uh, I think I'll get a drink. Uh, he says, fine. He says, fine, suit yourself. Just remember the secret knock when you come back in. We need, we, we're we not taking much, any chances. He says, he says, uh, and he turns and says, Darian. He turns to the, who he's saying to the guy there, who seems to let you in, says, lock the door after he leaves. He says, don't let anyone else in unless they know our code. Or, he says. All right. All right. So he opens the door, lets you out, it says, well, I hope you have a better night than you've had th than the day you've had. Well, you remind me what the secret knock is again. Alright, he knocks it out for you. It's basically just... That. Uh, do you hear that? No. Oh, you do? Okay. I can't exact... I can't audibly make it go over the microphone, unfortunately, but he tells it... He, he teaches it to you. You exit. You hear the sound of seven locks latching behind you. Okay. And then footsteps going away. Alright. Uh, head back to the whip. Yeah. You do realize that the that one that one guard did see you turn into this thug and head in this direction, so. Yeah, I'm gonna head towards him if he's still there. Alright, so head back to the Alright. So we are head, leaving out the building now. Alright, so you leave the tower. Yeah, and I'm gonna start heading this way. Yep. Yeah. Roll a perception check for her. Thirty twenty. Thirty twenty. Okay. She starts flying a broad circle, and she does catch him, and the other two dragging the body towards the watch house. So you think they're heading back in? I am going to jog up to them. Okay, so you are running up to them as they are going into the. Watch house. Yes. All right, you jog up to them. The it is mostly the other. It's the other two guards are mostly doing most of the heavy lifting. He's mostly just directing and overseeing and trying to keep people back. Like turns around, sees you. It's supposed to be, sees the face of the guard that he's carrying and jumps and says, realizes it's you. Oh, so you dropped this guy's self by this point? Okay, so that doesn't happen then, which would have been a very good moment. <laughs> he says, yeah, what do you want? I said, well, I would like a moment of your time. 
And he says, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been quite busy at the moment. A lot's happened. He says, we don't have a lot of spare time at the moment to deal with foreigners. He says, So, Harbeck and Orog. Okay. I'm going to see how he reacts to that. Natural one. He goes pale and drops his spear on the ground. And everyone hears that. And he says, he quickly regains his composure. says, careful with that. He says, he says, he says, get it through here quicker. And he leans down to pick up his, what? Yeah. He takes it. His hand is a little trembling at that. <laughs> he's like, he's, you, you've, you've uh, rattled him with that. Shall we go for a walk? So he turns to the, basically the officer on the desk and says, uh, this uh, individual simply has some things he wishes to discuss with me. It might be pertinent to some case. He quickly walks out and I assume you follow? He says, what do you want? I want to know some more details of what's going on in there. I know that they've paid for that place, and, but I want to know how many people they have. And also, they mentioned a certain amount of legality now. They're paying somebody in authority mm-hmm. so they can operate. Who is that? Well, they paid for the building. It was uh, basically after it fell out of favor. It was basically going there and they going nowhere. And the town was a little hard strung and they came up with a lot of cash. They basically just bought the building. Uh, they were able to get uh, one of the someone on the council to sign the papers over to them in exchange for the sum, which would go into the town coffers. It, it was legal, technically. It says... I have no idea who, but... Alright, they are going to come into some bad luck. But, I don't want you spoiling the surprise. What would it cost for me to ensure your silence? Fifty gold, he says. Make an intimidation check with advantage. Twenty-five, he says. Yes, so 12 gold now. We need 12 gold right now. Mm-hmm. And if you are true to your word, I'll pay you 13 tomorrow. And you'll never hear of me in association with this. Are we in, are we in agreement? Deal, he says. And he sticks his hand up to shake yours, basically. Alright, I shake his hand. I pay him 12 gold. Alright, you pay him 12 gold. With the promise of 13 tomorrow. He goes back into the watch office out of the rain and is in is pleased to see you go, basically. Alright, so you come over to the Whip Will. And yeah, where there's myself and two small winged children who are sitting at a table eating their fill of food. Cool. This is probably 
Yes. Here, someone says, I, I mean, I've heard of them, but I've never even seen one before, let alone two in Vern's Run. He says, like, this is like, this is like, the other one says, I, says, I thought they were only found like on a, like, on an island. It says like, that, just like off the coast. This is like, says, yeah, this is like, yeah, this is like, and there's a few other rumors you hear going by as you come up. It says, I've never, it's like, <laughs> there's just a bunch of wonder at the moment. It says, there's a few people who say, eh, it's a bad omen compared to, along with everything else that's happening at the moment. There's always one. Okay. In the meantime, I introduced them as uh, Ray. I point to the young girl and Daichi to the boy. I say, they're Tengu. Specifically, Copa Tengu. Apparently, I've heard of them in some of my research. You can roll in our contract if you want. Okay. Uh, you've heard of Tengu. They are a very old, long-lived race that are basically akin to Fey, though they may have slightly different origins. The general belief is that they evolved basically from exceptionally long-lived animals. The most common two are wolves and crows, usually. You said the plumage I didn't recognize. You did not recognize the plumage. Definitely not crow plumage? These are not crow plumage feathers, no. Anyway, uh, yes, and uh, they have innate magic abilities. They live longer than elves. Even. So, they can live with... Uh, huh? From, our, from my perspective, forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they... They usually have a degree of respect for tradition. And there's some divisions among their people. But they're usually lawful. Yeah. But it varies between them. And with that role, you don't know too much else about them. Yes, I said, with my cat. <laughs> you notice that uh, Alice is passing between the table just, and just... Yeah. Yeah, just like... We will definitely keep an eye on you. Yeah. From a yes, and I say to you, Whisper, and I'm definitely putting alarm on the door. Yeah. Alright. Right. So we get them situated. I cast alarm on the door and windowsill, like we normally would, and I'm just going to leave them there. Yep, lock the door. I said, what did you discover? Our uh, grave robbing buddies are back. Oh, yes, we never did catch them. Uh, they apparently now changed businesses. They are now bought ferry in the place, believe it or not. And have set up a slavery business, but apparently not going too well. So they went from corpse trafficking to humanoid trafficking. I said, well, you said there was two there, plus them, and there was another group, they said, right? Yes, there right. is... So... There's the two of those guys, the dwarf and the half-ogre. Yep. And then I saw inside two henchmen. Yep. And then on top of that, there's another group of uh, slavers who are apparently in town, but have not reported in yet. Okay, so that's a minimum of a six, I would think. Yes, but if business isn't going well for them at the moment, they may not have the wages to pay for too many people. So what is the plan? Obviously we deal with them, but how? Well, I know the knock to get in. We know the knock, that's good. Uh, Do we go right now? That is 
the question. I'd rather get them all at once. I'm, I say, not poorly prepared to deal with this, I say, but I'm not as prepared as I would like to be. Not to storm a fortress. Yeah, I'm only down a couple of spell slots, but one of them is an important spell slot. We could take... No. Oh. We could, in theory, by the time we were having supper and everything, we could have taken a short rest. So we can say we did that. Or we can take one now, if you don't want to feel like that's cheating a little bit. Um, well, no, it's automatic that you take a short rest. You yeah. Have, you have to declare a short rest? Not really. You just have to spend an hour not doing anything strenuous, which, in theory, is what we would have... We could have covered that, yes. Okay. Right. So, I'm going to regain the spell slot I spent for Attack Thoughts. That's the only one. I'm at full health. You can get a up to three spell levels worth of spells back. I'll get my third level spell slot back. You can, also sp you can also roll any hit dice you want, because you did take uh, some damage. Yeah, I took eight hit dice. I might as well recover those. I don't think I'm going to take more than one hit dice, but we'll see. You can always roll another one if it doesn't work out. Okay, so you're down a hit point. No. Alright. Really All right. So at the very least an hour is gone by. And plus a bit. Plus, yeah, yeah. Probably closer to two, I think. Yeah. So do we wait so the question is, do we think that they'd have come back by now? Well we don't know, that's the problem. We do not know. Uh we do not know where they are. Mm -hmm. so I can yep. Assuming they have one. Well, they are collecting. Yep. A wagon of that size in Vern's Run would go would be easy to spot. We can start there, I suppose. Yeah, it is also quick. Now yep. can do a, a search for the town. Yep. Well, down by the waterfront, especially. And, okay. Uh, we'll I am going to roll. Okay, I'm going to roll. Yeah. Well, what'd you roll first? Let's just let me say. Nine. Nine? That's not terrible, because this is not a hard check. It's just determining if a cart is there. I'm going to roll to see if it's back. <laughs> you do see a second cart and a second set of horses being tended to in the stables there. That was not there before. So you relay that? You relay that to me? Yeah, and I say, well, if you're really concerned, I've been there. I've been in that main chamber. I can cast clairvoyance in there from here, if you want me to check. If not, we can go. All right, are we going then? Yes, we know how to get in. We know the layout. That too. Ray and Daichi are as secure as they can be at the moment. I can redisguise myself. You could. Oh, actually, I can. <laughs> Oops. You can't? You're out of. No, it was on the ring. It was on the ring. That's true. And I do not have it prepared. So, no, you can't. Oh, we're going in guns blazing. We could go in invisible. We did that last time. Yes. Well, they have to open the door. They have to open the door. If I do the knock, they open the door, and there's no one there. That's going to raise suspicion anyways. Okay. So we're just going... So we're going in... Yeah, we're going in... Uh, well, not guns blazing. I think it's going to be frost breath. Uh, uh, at the howling instead. Yeah. Because it's probably going to be... Makes sense for me to be the close one there. Oh no, it's not one of our better plans. It's definitely not one of our more finesse based ones. That's for certain. Okay, hold on, hold on a second now. I remember the layout of this place. The top floor yep. had access 
this, right? Can you get into the top four? Or was there, like, I know most of this arrow split from the ground floor, but there are actually windows on top floor. Uh, there is windows, I think, yes. I don't remember. You designed the place. <laughs> No, you did. Well, Jonas is asking if he remembers. See, the problem is, I'm trying to get the point here, is you're the one who actually put the tower together. So you know the layout. I don't, as well. Well, I know there's a secret door. We know there's a secret door because Therian used it. We never found out where it went. We, we knew where it went. It went to this building here. Oh. Well, we could try getting in that way. That would probably be the best bet. Yep. Of course, we don't necessarily know how to open that door. Give it a try. See what mm -hmm. happens. Okay. Then we'll do the knock-knock and start pulling stuff out. Yeah, because I cannot knock... I cannot cast knock on the door. I don't have that spell prepared. We could rest eight hours, and then I could prepare a knock, and then we could go in that way, but not much more. No. Nope. No. Well, it is disguised self. Yeah, I know. I can yeah. say you're a potential recruit. Okay. Trying to make up for the loss. Okay, so we're going into the secret entrance then. Sure, unless you want to take an ARF. You're a active player. It sounds like we're going through, through the secret door. Uh, anyway, we'll there. Yeah, this is a time-sensitive thing. I think we have to we have to go through it this way. All right. So to speed this up a little bit, we make it to the secret, uh, sorry, we make it to that building. Oh, Alright, so this is where we will be coming in. Yes. If, we can open if we can open the door. It's not really a secret door, do we know it exists? Yes. So Yes. So we are still technically in the building that is across from this tower. That is the way in for us. Well, that most likely is locked as well, I guess. Yep. So we're going to be on that door at the moment, so how are we getting through that door? Uh, I'm going to examine the door first off. Okay. I'm going to search for traps and see if it's locked and all that sort of fun stuff. Roll investiga investigation check with advantage. Okay. It is. You do not think it's trapped. It is locked. I will try picking the lock with my thieves' tools, which you do have, but you're not proficient with. So this is just dexterity. Seventeen. That picks the lock. This isn't too difficult. <laughs> All right. So once we get in here, we know where the trap door is leading down to the tunnel. Yeah. Yes. So that we are able to open. Yes. And we're able to go down. So we come to the long tunnel. And we're going to go along there. Crosses the street. Crosses the street, yep. And we're going to come to the other door, which is where Therian had cast the alarm spell on previously. So that spell is gone now because he hasn't been able to cast it since then. He's dead. But this door is also likely to be locked, I suspect. Possibly trapped, but... I don't know if they know, but... I mean, yeah, who knows what they know. Who knows? Are we... Let's, uh, investigate. Alright, with advantage, my help. As far as you're concerned, it is not trapped. It is locked. <laughs> not very confident about this, though. I am going to attempt to pick the lock. Okay. 30, 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a more complicated lock, but you are still able to pick it.
Unfortunately, what you didn't notice was there was a wire, and you snip it, and it keeps going, and suddenly it doesn't. Suddenly, there's this bell, which is in the next room, which starts ringing. And it keeps ringing a little bit, and it's loud. So a little bit of a makeshift alarm. Not a magical one, but still. Alright. Oh well. And you hear footsteps coming down from above. Alright. Are you doing anything? No. Nope. So the door is just open ajar at the moment. Oh, uh, door's closed. Door's closed? Is it open our way? It, it opens outwards, and it is ajar a little bit at the moment, because that's what tripped the wire. Yes. So, I'm going to close the door. Yeah. I'm going to get you to help me. We're going to hang on to whatever latch there is on this side. Oh, good. We're going to rely on our strengths. Our massive strengths. Or, um, do I know this lock well enough to quickly reset it? You could try. I will try. Fourteen? Uh, you can't, you, you're confident you can reset this. You're not confident you can do it quickly, but are you going to try? I'm going to try. Alright. So that's what you're doing at the moment. You're re-locking the door with your picks. You hear footsteps coming down on the other side. Just, in, you know, it says, and, uh, says, what set that, it says, what set that off? That was outside the box. That doesn't count. It says, here another one says, it stops the ringing and says, and he looks up and you can hear it says, here's your picking and says, someone's, at the, someone's, someone's messing with the lock on the door. It sounds like uh, Darian, the one who you were talking to up, upstairs at the door ward before. Okay. Uh, at this point, I can, you can make one more check to attempt to, qui to quickly lock this door. Or you can try something else if you want. Roll a deception check. The only reason you are not at disadvantage is because of the voice. Uh, this is a contested check. <laughs> I should probably take a picture of this. I mean, we can do. I like doing the. I like the idea of doing little dice inserts for things like this because this is, this is funny. I'm just gonna reorient that so you guys can see it properly. Did that come out? It did. That's a natural one. Darian says. Uh, Darian says, uh, uh, oh, oh. "This is like oh, fine, fine." Says like we, we we set the alarm up to come through the to come to this because this is a secret w passage out apparently. Well, says well, fine. Says like quit messing with the lock and come through. Uh, at this point, yes, you have you have relocked the door. We'll say. I think I might have had a little bit too much to drink. You you want okay? So it's like that's fine, fine. You, you hear him? Don't worry, I'll go back around to the regular doors. Oh, <sighs> you hear a loud sigh. He's <laughs> just grumbling. Just, all right, let's go back up. Tell some. He says, "You go tell the bosses we're fine." 
says though he may not be after this. All right. So you managed to divert that <laughs> largely due to a natural one. Okay, so now what? <laughs> now that Jonas has probably had a few years shaved off his lifespan there. I'm going to wait a few seconds, like, like half a minute. Yeah. So you hear... You hear three sets of footsteps go back up, and one go down. And a few months later, one come back up, and keep going up. Another set of stairs. Uh, so the guy went downstairs to tell the bosses. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And then I the door again. <laughs> okay. Just roll another check. I just want to see how long this is going to take. You're pretty familiar with this lock at this point, so I think you can do it as long as you don't roll a one. How about a 20? Yeah. Right. Silently. They also did not rearm the alarm. You also rolled a 20, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, so the door is open now. Yep. There are four people you suspect waiting upstairs yep. for you to get to the door. Actually, you can hear a voice says, What's taking him so long? I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Just lock him down. You do that. I whisper to you, well, now what? Well, we have two options. We can go upstairs and slaughter these buggers. Or we can go downstairs and deal with the bosses. Yes. We do know none of these staircases have doors, though. So as soon as a fight breaks out, one side may inevitably come to join the other. I think it's more likely that uh, the henchmen will come to assist their masters if we go down and deal with them first. I think so. Regardless, they will try and join their forces at least until the point they realize how it's going to go. Well, we have to come up with a decision then. Yes. Or I just throw a fireball downstairs because I know how big it is and my fireball will just fill the yes. whole place. The, was there another floor below us? Or is it just the way down? Okay, so that, so there's only one floor down we have to go. Or there's a few floors up. Yes. There's a number of floors up. But there's only one below us. And a fireball fills this whole thing. Okay. What are we doing? Uh, I think we have... I'll have to obviously go down the stairs just a little bit so I can see. Yes. There's going to be stealth checks involved, whatever we do. If you stay at the top of the stairs, I can lob it a fireball. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to kill them, most likely. But they will be thin. I'll take damage, yeah. And they'll probably be coming up the stairs, and then you can just cross press them. Okay. So you want us to form a bit of a... Okay. All right. If I'm staying up here, I probably do have to. I probably do have to roll a stealth check. No, yeah. I mean they can't stay on this, this is stone floor. Yeah. I'm just gonna go. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. Yeah. I'm gonna go just to there. Okay, and I'm going to be waiting at the top of the stairs. And you can wait right here, so you have to be right straight down. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you look down. Yep. Roll a perception check just to see how much you can see down there because this isn't the clearest view. Yep, your owl's outside still. You could resummon her if you wanted. No, um, five. Five? Okay. They're not. It's not hidden, it's not the best view, but you can just barely see, you can see Orog, who is quite big. 
the, who is stomping around down there, and he's talking to someone, whom you assume is Harbeck. I'm not going to bother trying to creep down further to get a better view, because I'm just going to fireball centered on him. You're going to fireball on him? Yeah. All right. Uh, Where in the room is he, roughly? He's near the center of the room. He's basically just walking back and forth and talking to someone, whom you assume is Harbeck. Uh, do I hear his Harbeck voice? Yes, you do hear his voice. You have no idea if he's in the range of the fireball or not. Well, if he's in the center of the room, mm -hmm. then I have to reach him. Okay. Uh, roll your fireball, and I will roll two dexterity saving throws. And then we'll roll initiative. Those are... Those are terrible. Well, I think I finally broke average. Alright. Well, Harbeck rolled an 11. Yeah. Orog rolled an 8. So they both fail. Alright, and we are going to be rolling initiative, and I'll calculate their damage into this, because Fireball is not quiet. Uh, Alright, that is cocked. That is- I'm rolling good initiative today. Oh no, really? Yep. Uh, Har Harback? Harback and Orog. I rolled a good initiative, but Harback rolled a natural 20. Uh, he has a plus two. He has a plus two dexterity modifier. Okay, he rolled a natural twenty, so I think that means he's going to go first. Oh yeah, what'd you get? I have an eighteen, so I'm up next. Uh, he has an eleven. All right, one second. Two. Perhaps fittingly, because uh, this would have definitely taken them a little bit by surprise. Alright, and I'm going to have to calculate the damage in here in a moment. Then we can begin. All right, and the thugs are going last. So there are four of them. All right, so you said how much damage? 28? 28. All right. I'm sure they're not happy with that, but... No, they're not. All right, so Harbeck has that much left. Horog. Has that much left. Okay. Alright, so now we're in the combat. Alright, Harbeck is up first. He says, What was. He says, One by attack! He says, I hear him pick something up and he's going to. <laughs> well, Orog had that. He runs to the edge, and he's gonna see if he can see you from where he is as if he moves. Uh, that's not that's not good. Uh, yeah, that's uh. Yeah. He can't quite see you from where he is, unfortunately, as he's moving. He's going to have to dash up. At which point he can get a clearer view of the stairs, <laughs> and he can see both of us really because neither of us are. Yeah, he has a heavy crossbow in his hand, which is loaded, and he's aiming it up. 
And he has a great axe strapped to his back. Alright, that's his turn. We come to you. Rinse and repeat? Why not? <laughs> Uh, he is at the base of the stairs. Somewhere between 10 and 15 feet. You guys did. You might miss some of the corners. <laughs> anyway, what are you doing? Oh, you're casting another fireball, okay. Fireball the Getting both of them yet again. Okay, yeah. Uh, Alright, Harbeck succeeds this time. Alright, so Harbeck takes 15 points of damage because he succeeded. And Horak takes a full 30. Points of damage. Yeah, no, they're both standing, but that was a lot. Okay. You were not, you were at the top of the stairs. Oh, that's right. These uh, the crystal rods make this a bonus action. I'm just gonna use the dire wolf. Okay. I'm going to the crystal and activate the dire wolf at the top of the stairs. All right, at the top of the stairs where we are. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but at the top of the stairs where I am. Okay. Roll initiative for the wolf. And I will look up at stats. Okay. That's two. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> they have the exact same dex modifier. Plus two modifier. So that's a total of... That's a 22 on... Roll again for him for a second. I'm just going to see. We'll roll, do whichever one is higher here. Just the number. 18. The wolf is higher. Rolled a 17. <laughs> so the dire wolf doesn't get to go this turn, unfortunately. I have them here. Yeah. He does. He also has uh, some hit points. Well, that may not come up. Unless we throw something else in there. Alright. My turn. Okay, unlike you, my air effect spell doesn't reach all the way into the room. But he is right there. Do I... You just cast both of those off. So both fireballs have been cast. might be a better idea for me to save my area effect spells for the moment. I can't see Orog, and I, I can't see Orog, I can see him, but I can't reach him with Frostbreath. Unless I go all the way down, even then it's going to be stretching it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know where he is. I'm going to cast Magic Missile at second level at Harbeck, who has taken a lot of damage, and I'm going to try and bring him down. And I'm going to save my area effect spells. Uh, for everything else we're going to have to deal with. So, 44 plus 4. Okay. Okay. 13 points of force damage. He's, uh, he's standing, but barely. He's taking a lot of damage. 
Yes, or, well, Org is a, lot, is a bit hardier. I'm going to move back to where you are after that. Right. Speaking of Org, it's his turn. You hear the sound of him. He hears a roar and pulls the glaive from his back, and he's going to rush forward towards uh, the staircase. He was closer. So... Uh, alright. With his... So he can get there and he sees the dire wolf. He reaches back and pulls out from his behind him a javelin. And he's going to throw it at the wolf. Oh, I'm pretty sure that hits. Yeah, 21 hits. Okay. That was, uh, not the best amount of damage. Six points of piercing damage to the dire wolf. And he's going to pull back and throw, he's going to throw another one, because he can throw two. For his multi-attack. Okay, well, a nine doesn't hit. The other one goes flying into the chamber, and he's down two javelins. Alright. From up the stairs, you hear uh, panicked voices and hurried feet coming down. But there's several floor, but they were at the ground floor, and we're several floors down at this point. They have a few rounds to go. So we're back to the top of the round, which is the dire wolf now. They are both at the base of the stairs now. So, yes, that is very much true. Bite attack, yep. Plus five to hit. Okay. That makes it a dirty Hits! Roll damage. This is 2d6 plus 3. That's the exact same amount of damage the javelin just did. I rolled 13. Plus 5 is 16. Plus 5. Okay. The wolf leaps down. R takes a big bite at Harback's neck, bites into his neck and shakes him around and he's missed all the sections of the breastplate that he was wearing and just brings him down and it is a killing blow. Uh, the giant wasp did a good job, the giant scorpion did a good job. Yeah. But some of the other ones haven't done so well. But yeah, the wolf's doing fine. Yep. Uh, he doesn't have a multi-attack or anything, so... Oh. And then he's going to sit there standing or whatever. Yeah. Or, uh, His muzzle dripping with blood. Yep. Alright, so... Harbeck is dead. Because I was definitely not... You're definitely not taking these people alive. So we come to you now. There is still a half ogre down below. Yeah. I am going to cast Expedition Retreat. Alright, you cast Expedition Retreat. And then I'm going to go up 30 feet. Up. Oh. And then I'm going to do my action to cast uh, Marble. Okay, so you're moving to the staircase. This is the second field. Yep. And I'm going to go up 30 feet, that's fine. You can get there, it's fine, yeah. Alright, so you're casting Firebolt at him. Yep. Nine. Miss. Slam, the Firebolt slams into the stone floor. Oh, you're using, okay, last point of luck. 
Roll. Thirteen just misses. <laughs> okay, yep. Okay, and you're concentrating on X Bishop Street. We have a half ogre down there who is potentially going to come up. If I don't. Okay. Uh, this is going quite well at the moment. I'm going to. Oh, he's a half ogre. That's the problem. Constitution is probably quite good. <laughs> I'm just going to cast magic missile at first level this time, and I'm just going to hit him again. Because I want to try and save some of my better spells, because we are going to have to probably fight our way out of here. With uh, the remaining thugs upstairs. I'm going to go to the staircase, and point my hands down, fingers spread wide, and I'm going to send three bolts of magic energy down. Four, ten, nine, twelve. Alright, twelve points of force damage. He's taking a lot of damage. And then I will stay there. I'm gonna see if he, uh, see if I can tempt him up. Maybe the wolf can get an attack There's opportunity. Of yeah, he's t he's hardy. We're at the level where enemies have a lot of points, especially fighters. Yeah. Right. His turn. He has, a wolf there. he has a wolf there, and me at the top of the staircase. <laughs> He is not stupid enough to charge up after me and attack it. He's going to take two swings with the glaive. Against what? He's not leaving the melee range. He's not stupid enough to do that, is what I said. Oh, I thought he said he was. No. He is going to attack the great attack the dire wolf with the glaive. Bring it around, and he's going to make two swings with it. He is within melee of the wolf because the glaive has a 10 foot reach. 21 to hit. Alright then. Um, 10 points of slashing damage on the first hit. Second swing. Natural 20. All right. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I think the wolf might be dead because uh, 16 doubles to 32 plus three is 35 points of slashing damage. Yep. So the wolf, dire wolf is gone, shattered into thousands of crystal shards by one sweep of the blade, the glaive. He has not moved yet, so yeah, he's going to use his movement and come right up to face to face with me. Yep. Alright, that's Orog's turn. The footsteps get closer. They probably made it to the staircase of the next room at this point, so. They still have a floor to go. So they're basically at the stairs of... Uh, they basically have made it halfway... They're here, yes. They still have a... They still have one floor to go. To us, yes. Yeah, we're here, so... 
They have a floor to go still, but that's but they're at the, they're at the base of the stairs of the next floor. Okay, that's their turn. Top of the round is you. Your dire wolf is dead. You feel the connection to your summoned creature severed. Oh, and Orog is basically at the stair, basically the stairs, looking down at me. He is badly burned and bloodied. He's badly injured, yeah, he's taking a lot of damage, but he's still standing, and he's uh, got a lot of frustration and in, melee con and in melee with me, and he's probably going to vent his frustration on me, with that glaive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's 8d4 plus 8, right? 74. Isn't it? No, wait, no. It's a first level spell. One charge is at first level, and every charge above that is an extra level. So yeah, it's. It's a six level magic. It's a six level magic missile, people. That's 8d4 plus 8. Sixth level magic missile. Wow, this is uh, this is amazing. Yeah, six. This is going to. Uh, yeah. That is twenty-eight points of damage. Please describe how you kill Orog. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Yep, he had eleven hit points, by the way. Uh, Left. A little overkill. I was like, that's why. <laughs> the six charges was a bit yeah, much. Okay. <laughs> so you basically just blast him with a machine gun fire style barrage of magic missiles. Yep. And he basically tumbles down the stairs back into the floor below, taking the glaive with him. That's fine, I could have missed you stepped out of the way, <laughs> but <laughs> that works. Okay, that's your action. Do you have anything else you want to do? Okay, so you're going to come over to stare down to the... <laughs> yep, there's two of them down there. Yep. Peeking behind the curtain here a little bit, everyone. I added a lot of these uh, thugs into this campaign because, I, the, sorry, this session, because I thought we were going to be, <laughs> these guys were going to be a little underwhelming. <laughs> Turns out I was right. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, anyway. The really yes. Really helped, okay, yeah, so they're dead. All right, uh, so it's my turn now. Are we just waiting for them to come down, or are we going up? Uh, we have a nice clear line of fire. Yeah. Or should I go to the base of the stairs and frost breath as soon as I see them? Or should I? We could just wait until they come down. It's a 30 foot cone. I can probably, if I take a few steps forward, I can fill the entire stairwell. Okay. I will. Yeah. I will take a few steps forward, so I'm kind of in the a bit, not quite the center of the room, but I'm just I'm just waiting that way. All right, so that's my turn. I'm not holding anything because they won't me. All right, their turn. They all come to up. I hear a voice on the top of the stairs. So you hear? It sounds like it's gone quiet. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, you say it's a bad thing? Yeah, it says. 
uh, here Darian, who seems to be in charge of us. All right, let's get them. They come. The, they use the remainder of their movement and their action, which adds dash, to come down the stairs a little bit. You see, two of them are coming down the stairs, and you see two of them are readying just behind there. And uh, that's their turn. Okay. So it's your turn now. Are you doing anything? Yeah, I'm going to come back for Darian. Darian? Okay, so he's the lead guy. Yeah, okay. Rolled hit. You have a clear line of fire. Okay. So this is 4d8, I think. Yeah. That'll be a 19 to hit. Hits. Roll damage. And I assume you're setting it to fire? Fire. Okay. I'll do my signature element. 4d8 fire damage. This could, uh, yeah. This could hurt. It could. Well, it's not all eights then. It's only thirteen points of damage. Oh, that was that was sad. Well. Okay, yep, yeah, it hits him. It lights his body up and singes his body and, bur and burns his skin, and the flames go out, die out, and he's still got the mace ready. Okay. Yep, I uh, step forward, and I cast Frost Breath. Up at, at an angle upwards, up the staircase, which will hit all four of them, because they've grouped together. Thugs are not the smartest individual in the world, and they are not used to dealing with area effect spells. You know that green die I rolled at the beginning of the session and it wasn't rolling above 10 at all? Does it roll No, it rolled an 8. No. It's <laughs> still rolling bad. Sorry, that lead in session was leading me in a completely different direction. Okay. So, it's a constitution saving throw, so they have a con. They do have a constitution box, yes. Okay, so in order from Darien. Okay. Darien, 9. The next one down there with him, 10. The next in line, six. The fourth and final one rolled a total of 20. And is not restrained. Oh, my defense. Alright, 3d10. Oh, well, this is sad. Okay, so... 11 points of cold damage. Well, at least you're not gonna laugh at my, uh... 13 for, for my course. No, that's quite sad. Alright. And the last one takes only 5. And is free. The other 3... Are restrained as ice freezes their as ice freezes around their body, rhyming them and restraining them in place. Their speed is zero. Okay, so that is going to require some very specific things to happen in in the order here. The three who are frozen are going to attempt to make strength checks because if they can't break free. Their friend can't get down to us. So I'm going to roll their strength checks first, because that's their action. It's their action to do this. They all fail. 
Darian rolled a natural one. Which doesn't do anything really about this, unfortunately. The third... You see him, look at this, see situation, turns and runs. Because he can. <laughs> there are three frozen thugs in the way. It would be an acrobatics check to get by them. Alright, we're we're coming to your turn. So it's your turn now. Do you want to do you want to try it? So you move up. Okay, you can get by them. However, you're moving through all three of their territories. Their mo melee range. Yeah, so they can they can still swing at you a little bit. So it's a disadvantage. But well, a twelve misses. That's another 12. Okay, also. No, that's a 14. Alright, so one does hit you. You cast shield as a reaction, alright? And the last one rolls. Well, the wasted natural 20. 17? So, no, they all. They take. So, two swing on the shield, one misses you completely. That was Darien, and you go up past them. Uh, okay, it's gonna take your full 60, it's gonna take 60 movement, which is your movement and bonus action, with the exhibition retreat, to get up to the next floor. Okay. Do I see the other guy? Yes. He is there. At the, he is, uh, he has made it to the base of the other staircase, and he's about to start heading up. Yes, you can. Yes, reactions work on their own rules. Okay. Make your attack. Oh! Natural one. Natural one. Slams into... <laughs> I think the ups the room above us was the mess hall, wasn't it? It slams into one of the wooden benches there and it catches fire. And it's a D8 damage, right? Uh, 4 D8. 4 D8, okay. That's fine. I'm just rolling, I just rolled 1 D8. That, the table is going to be burning for the next 7 rounds. Until this, unless someone puts those flames out. Okay. That is annoying. Alright. burning through spell slots, I tell you. Yep. Alright, so it's now my turn. And I can't do what I was planning on doing, because you are standing <laughs> at the top of the stairs. I was going to frost breath them again. I could move back and I suppose still hit them and not you, but it's... You know, you moved 60 feet from your location up to the up the stairs and into the next room. So you... Yeah. Yes. So... Okay, I suppose we hit, I suppose I can still hit them. Okay, fine. I think there's some finagling going on here, but <laughs> Alright, I'm going to I'll just take a step back just to be safe, but I'm going to frost press them again because that was pathetic. Alright. Well, Darian rolls a natural twenty. The other two fail. I don't know how I feel about the fireball. Yeah. The other two fail. That is better. 17 points of cold damage. Alright. So, 
Darian weathers it really well. Annoyingly, I just want to point this out now. If it was not for our house rule about natural 20s, meaning you take no damage, he'd be dead. Because the half damage would kill him. But that's fine. They're all still restrained, so that doesn't change anything. Alright, yeah. It's their turn, and I am out of third level spell slots. Because at this point, the Darien reveals that he's a spellcaster and starts casting high level spells us because I can't counter spell. <laughs> I think not. All three of them are going to try to break free. Okay, so Darien has rolled a natural 1, a natural 20, and now a natural 1. Is there strength that one? <laughs> 16 was the highest, which is below my spell save DC. <laughs> yeah? Alright. Alright, it's the fourth one's turn now. Who sees you? Uh, was in the middle of running away, and I'm just going to roll to see. Okay. This black die is one of the ones I've been rolling. One, twenty, one, twenty. He is going to turn and see you and charge at you. He can make it to you. And he is going to take... Uh, did they? Yep, they do have a multi attack. These are the same as the other guys. Two swings with his mace at you. Uh, I have shield up. Yes, because it isn't your round yet, so you have 19 armor class. All right, well, it wasn't a natural one, which was what would have which would have happened if the pattern held. But a nine misses, and and. An eleven also misses. He takes two swings and just it just ricochets off the shield both times. Yeah, Alright, that's his turn. He's in melee with you. Your turn comes up, shield fades, and what are you gonna do? I was about to say, oh no, this fight is going so badly for us. Yeah, he's uh, rather hardy still. He take he this does a lot of damage and it blasts right into him at point blank range because he was swinging a mace at you, and you basically just the shield fades. You put your hand up, release the three bolts, and they just impact right into him, and the the panic returns to his eyes. He's like, "Oh right, <laughs> this isn't going well for us." And he's like, "He's like, I probably should have run away." <laughs> that's the look on his face. All right, so that's your turn. You were kind of stuck between him and uh, the rest of his frozen friends. You could technically circle around him if you want, in his melee, if you want to get out of the staircase. Okay. Alright, my turn. I am very annoyed that these three are still alive. And I'm going to cast Magic Missile. At fourth level, sending two bolts at Darien and one at the other two each because they're both, they're all on, pretty much on death's door. Hilariously, Darien lives. He takes seven points of force damage, bringing him to one hit point. Alright, one of them, one of them is dead. Definitely. Okay. And the other one... The last bolt only does two points of damage, so he's still up two, so... <laughs> two ones! On that. Yeah, it happens. At least one's dead now. 
and the other two aren't <laughs> are basically going to possibly die of hypothermia if they uh, if they don't get out of there. All right. Yes. All right. Two of them. They can't break free. <laughs> They're going to be stuck in those. I've created two coffins of ice around them, basically, at this point, I think. It's going to melt in a minute, but that's about it. I don't... That's a natural... Another natural one. And... A nine. The, th the third and final thug, at this point, turns and runs. He's not doing well. He's running. He's... Are you doing anything? Yeah, okay. He makes it back to the staircase and uses his action to dash back up it. So he's on the next floor. It's your turn. That's super speed. <laughs> yeah. Yep, okay. So you... Uh... Actually, no, I'm going to... Okay. Uh, for a 21 to hit. Hits. Oh, pair of nines. He just took 18 points of damage. You hit him square in the back as he's running with a firebolt, and he goes up in a gout of flame, falls and falls to the ground, smoldering. He is dead and burning, and, and basically you are cremating him as well at the time, at the moment. Uh, the rest of my move, which I have locked up still. Yep. Head back to the stairs. You head back to the staircase, where you can see one of them is now dead, just lying there, slumped backwards, encased in ice from the shoulders down. And the other two are struggling, and they look awful. Okay. It's my turn. Yep. Yeah. I frostbite Darian. <laughs> no, he rolled. He rolls an eight. I just rolling damage because it, it, yeah, eight points of damage. It doesn't matter. He had one hit point left. Darian succumbs to the cold and dies. And is probably frozen there for all time. Do we? It is his turn. And he can't break free. It's your turn now. It's like they're stuck there. He's... He, all his friends are dead. <laughs> no, friends. His colleagues are dead. He's encased in ice. And, uh... He's terrified. Okay, you maneuver with great difficulty through this uh, stairwell, which is now mostly frozen corpses. Okay. <laughs> it's the reality of the situation, I'm afraid. Yes, well, I have lots of movement, so I'll take my time. Uh... I'm just going to say for argument's sake that we are not in combat at the moment, because <laughs> there are no combatants left. He has two hit points. Very close. Yes. <laughs> what do you want to know? He says, chattering his teeth. Possibly out of fear, possibly out of the fact he's freezing. He says, I was Counselor Ralam, who okay, who was, uh, who signed all the official papers. He says, he made it legal. He says, we were just buying property. He says, as for who's coming, well, I think they, they said, uh, 
there's a sorcerer coming from Ulrix who was possibly interested in buying some of our merchandise. How were you contacted? It says, he points down the staircase. You would have had to ask Habrek and Orog, who I assume were dead. He says, they were the ones who handled that, not us. You didn't hear anything? Uh, no. Alright, I'm going to leave him frozen there for a moment, so to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's fro he, the ice is going to last a minute. Less now, but yes. Alright. So then I'm gonna search. Um, that's a good thing. Alright, pretty good. I am going to investigate this room. I want to find hopefully some written. Okay. Am I staying up there to keep an eye on him or am I assisting you? No, no, I'm gonna stay and keep an eye on him. Okay. Make sure he doesn't run away. Then uh, you are on your own for this check. One second. Okay. What did you roll? Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay, you're just searching the downstairs room? Them. Them? Uh, the two corpses. Yes. And the room looking for <laughs> any kind of um, anything really. Okay. Uh, okay, you search the room. It looks like this is mo this. You remember that what uh, Therian used this for? This was like an interrogation chamber where people could be restrained, interrogated, tortured, and they have not really repurposed this room far beyond that. They are basically in the process of getting set up here. You think they haven't? They haven't probably been in this tower very long yet. And. Uh, All right, you find some papers, but it's, you do find the the legal papers to this. Uh, hey, we own the flower now. <laughs> to this tower, we and it is indeed signed by Councillor Rolam. Right. You find some other papers, but it's not very important. This doesn't seem to be the type of business where there's a lot of paperwork. Is it's mostly just you don't want to leave a trail, I guess. Yeah, you also don't find a lot of gold. They really are doing quite poorly for themselves. Searching them and the the, the others, Good. you basically find probably thirty gold. They're doing poorly for themselves. Like they were hoping to. This is their last ditch effort, I think. So I am down two gold pieces on the day. Yeah. All right. You also, while you're looking around and you find the weapons, yep. Okay. That glaive is nowhere to be found. The glaive is not anywhere on the is not on the ground anywhere. It. You saw Orog fall down the stairs. The glaive was in his hands. It tumbled out of his hands onto the floor when he died. You saw exactly where it was. It's not there now. Well, I've already rolled my investigation checks, but I'm going to go over to the spot. Is it there? Hidden? Invisible? Gone? <laughs> you can roll another investigation check if you want. Uh, better. Uh, 23. You do not find it. It is nowhere to be found. It's gone. That was a high roll, and you do not sense any movement. You don't see any strange, strange movements. You don't hear any footsteps. Nope. I'm going to pop my owl into existence here and have her use her keen hearing and eyesight to see if she notices anything. Roll a perception check with advantage. I mean, the odds you rolling above 23 with this are low. 
Nothing. Well, that is interesting. Yep. I just decided to roll to see what my character would do. Yeah. I rolled a two. So what'd you do? I guess I just tied him up. It's fine. I was like, I don't know. I was just like, I don't really like, I don't really like these people. They are enslaving people. They are enslaving two very nice children whom I had a, was able to spend some time with. Okay. It's like, I mean, I was well within my rights to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> like. Actually, how much better would be dead? All right. I'm time. You want you want time? Okay, you want time. Your mom. He runs. <laughs> Half trips over the still thawing bodies of his uh, comrades, but <laughs> yeah. gets going. Alright. Let's get in here. Yes. All right. So as we exit the building. Next to the tower, heading back towards our room at the Whippoorwill for a much needed rest and needing to check on Ray and Daichi. This is where we're going to call it for today. Yep. That's where that the session tonight. <laughs> yep. Well, sometimes the session works out that way. Thank you for watching, everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you here again next time where we continue our journey in this world we've created as things continue to escalate because. Boy, are we so close to having some really interesting characters in Vern's run. Yeah, nasty, in other words. Yep. Bye, all.